they'd be trying very hard to. <laughs> yeah, it must be that feeling the work is sort of paid off and now it's time to it's have a good... It's the showtime, Yeah, right? exactly. It's time to perform. For have us fun. and for them. Those are our top six. So Nikola Uznik, Dohyan Lee, Mejdi Shao, Kokoro Fuji, Mikel Mawam and Serato and Raku make up our men's boulder final. Yeah, only 16 years old. Um, coming from Japan, though, you know, he's uh, coming from... Like one of the top climbing nations, the top climbing nation on the on the numbers. So he's got yeah. pedigree behind him. All he right, sure so Shorter, talk us through this boulder. Perhaps one of the easier ones out there, but still a challenge. From speaking to the setters, it seems like we're expecting the most tops on this boulder. Um, powerful, really strong movements, requiring some tension along the way with a very tricky last move. So you see the top hold there. It's a really good hold, but it's gonna be quite a powerful explosive movement to get to that so we think we might see some people drop the last move um, and then there's some tricky sections where there might be a few different beta options in the mid section All feels right. like it's good it's relatively good holds big moves but hard moves well, we're about to find out how hard it really is Nikola Uznik will be the first athlete out he's got four minutes to send this boulder and his world championships is underway with a big move out coming up underneath and matching the sloper and again a big shouldery camper style move to the right gets the left foot up left hand to the zone hold check out the score down on the bottom left that box will fill up halfway for a zone and full way for a top so he really needs to get in and start mantling pressing onto that right arm strong work here yeah thumbs in action and now needs to push out to the left, grabs the jar, but comes spinning off. And you said it, we were expecting some <laughs> falls up there. So this time I expect he'll try to go fast with the hands, keeping the body to the right, so he's able to get the weight through the feet. The last hold is, um, so the, the position that they put it in, vertical, it means that you want to have your body on the right-hand side of it to be able to get the weight through the good part of the hold. As soon as your body starts to come round in front of it or, or to the left, there's no way you're holding on. All right, so that's what he's got ahead of him. First of all, there's his mantle up to that tiny hole for the thumbs. So quick through that section. Yeah, it's, he's making it look deceptively easy, but it is powerful moves. Oh, huge drop knee in. Oh, I mean, what even is that? Is that drop, drop knee? Drop knee toe hook Egyptian. That sounds good to me. That's what he attempted anyway. And look at the fingers on the jib. So he's trying something different. He maybe perhaps wanted to be more static. Gonna have to pick one of the two options here. He's so fast through this start. Yeah, very shouldery on those slopers. Look at that pinch strength as he matches the sloper. Bumps out to the right again, left hand up, and then he'll start to press and full body working here. Makes the match again. Three oh, seconds no. though. Where did the time go? I, I, it was gone in a heartbeat. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, Dokian Lee is on. And good starting holds here. They're pretty positive in cut. There's a big jump on that. I think it was 60, 65 degrees in that middle section he's on. Makes the match, adjusts his hands across. Opting for a heel instead of a campus. So that's what he's got ahead of him. Two minutes 51 on the clock. And there's two scoring opportunities in a boulder competition. One is the zone, which is marked by that pink uh, line with the zone written in a circle. And the next one is the top, which is at the top of the wall, which you have to match and control it. You can't just snatch for it. And he's trying the campus this time and makes it work. Who needs feet? Who needs feet, exactly. <laughs> if in doubt, campus it out. Right, so Doyan is pressing up now, mantling through this section. Little adjustment for the right hand there to make sure he got the height to get to that small hold. And then we were told the small hold is there just to help you udge up a bit higher, get up into that mantle position. Ooh. Oh, so close. We saw fast, fast, fast feet there, but not kind of slipping around, but much easier said than done. Yes, well, that's the joy of our job. I mean, you competed on this stage. I just get to talk about it, so <laughs> you've experienced it. That day on his match again. I think he's going to go straight for the campus once more. I expect so. Makes it with ease, and now he starts this press upwards. Clock's ticking down, but he should easily have enough time. Yeah, I think Nikolai rested slightly too long here, really had to rush through it. Dokan's got at least 23 seconds to make this count. Likely to be the last time, though. 
She's using that little tiny jib to get a bit higher. Top for Dohan Lee. It was all about that left foot kicking into the wall to stop the swing. Really solid foot placement, a bit higher with the body. Uh, Mejdi is out. I was it's curious as to whether that foot would work. I thought people would try the left foot there. Um, but then I figured maybe you couldn't get your foot through because of the way the volume is. And I wasn't sure whether people would have enough height there, but don't you made it work? Did indeed. And he moves to the top of the leaderboard because of that. Mejdi will try to do something about that, though. Straight out to the sloper. And I would imagine he's going to go for the campus here. It's his kind of a move. Eyes it up, slaps out, just three fingers on the hold. And you can really see how far that is, how wide that move is. Yeah, bigger than it looks on TV as well. Working his feet up there, straight onto that little jib. Turning the hand for the mantle. Oh, ignores the left. Wow. Skips the jib entirely and makes the match. So what happened here is he got into that mantle, he opened his hips out, he got all his weight onto his left foot and was able to produce enough force through his palm to push his weight over onto the foot. That was impressive. Yeah, good stuff from Mejdi. Clever climbing. And it'll be interesting to see if anyone else tries that or whether he just read it instinctively in the moment because the athletes do read the routes together and they discuss Peter. Be interesting to see if he shared um, his ideas with his fellow French climber in finals or if he's kept it, kept it to himself. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out in a minute. Kokoro Fuji is about to get going. Defending world champion. Part of a big Japanese squad here who's made already made an impression. So incredibly strong through that move. You see his shoulders stayed, his arms stayed at 90 degrees the entire time he didn't dip. So strong, isn't he, on those kind of swing moves. Right now pressing, head almost on his palm as he he's, rocks upwards. He does have a toe hook currently on the lower hole, but he's just moved that off now. And he's, I think we're going to see him go fast. He's wanting a foot swap. Brings the right foot back down to the sloper. Uh, I did it myself. I don't know why. Really? <laughs> I think almost it's, you know, you want to have both just as, uh, for the options. Uh, we, we're seeing more and more that the male climbers are wearing short bags. It used to be mostly the female climbers. Um, I think on one of these boulders, we might not see anyone wearing a short bag, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. We will. Something exciting is coming up. So uh, stick with us. And if you're just joining us, well, we are at the World Championships here, and it's the men's boulder final. Kokoro Fuji attempt number three on this boulder. Attempt number two on this boulder. He's looking to try to bring. He hasn't quite figured this out yet, has he? He doesn't look comfortable there, right? No, goes for He's the toe. going for a toe hook. It looked like he didn't quite have the flexibility then to get his foot up there. That would be so cool if that worked. It would be amazing, but that time he missed it. A few minutes maybe, or sometimes four minutes the whole time, but uh, Mejdi topped within less than a minute, so yeah. Yeah, he'll know there might be a trick in there somewhere. Perhaps that's what he was looking for with that toe. Maybe because he was also spending a lot of time in that, in that space. You know, he looked uncomfortable getting to that last hold it's such a shame we're not going to see him get to have another attempt couldn't recover for <laughs> three true. rounds that's true <laughs> but yeah it's something you have to train though you have to be fit enough and you know now i'm focusing on rock climbing and it's the luxury of being able to choose when i climb when i feel good <laughs> uh, and just rest when i fancy it you know that's very different to competition climbing Comp climbing is so much harder than rock climbing, in my opinion <laughs> yeah it's just that time isn't it well michael is underway and up Good first moves from him, looking strong and powerful. Fighting hard here. Right, palm down as he starts to press upwards. Finds the jib. Eyes locked on that last hold. Oh, wow. And it's a flash for Mikel. What a moment for him. He hit that top hold so perfectly. His contact strength was incredible. He was not letting go of that hold when he hit it. So very perfectly. Yeah, let's watch this again. This was the bottom. Powerful one arm moves through it. Made the snatch, started the swing, got the left foot involved. Interestingly, his, his bottom foot was underneath the blue hole, so he was in a very similar position to Mejdi. He didn't look as comfortable, but um, when he went for the hold, he wasn't able to step through. He just was insanely strong and managed to hold the swing long enough to kick into the wall. And yeah, there was nothing that was pulling him off that wall then. 
Job done. So Serato will know that it is possible to flash this. As you said, you can you, you hear the crowd, you hear the time. So And you get called out quickly. And you get called out quickly. So two flashes down. What can Serato do here? Remember, just 16 years old. Bumps the hand. Looking his usual calm, casual self here. Tongue <laughs> sticking out as he makes the match. And let's watch this press. As we know, fairly straightforward up to this point. It's the last move. It's all important. Light exactly Mejdi. Same as Mejdi, yeah. You can see his flexibility here. That hip flexibility to be able to be in that position is insane. It's so impressive. It really did. Well, Serato, as we thought, confirmed at the top of the leaderboard, followed by Mikel Mawem and then Mejdi Shak, so two French athletes. It's going to be a lot of action coming. I think so. And this is boulder number two. So dual text, as we said. And Shauna, this first move from those starting holds up to the press, that's where that no texture surface is really hard to spot. It is really hard to spot. Um, it's quite fun, actually, because, you know, the black on yellow, it makes it hard to see for us, but it's also hard to see for the athletes, which is quite unique. Dual texture is often very obvious. Um, you can see it here, so it's a great example in the zone of which bit is no texture. So the bit with the, the white on, and you can see here as well, is the bit with texture. But the start hold, so the two tapes where the start hold is for your hands, is entirely textureless. Yeah, so that starting ledge feature where the two, uh, two green lines are on the start. Mm -hmm. And you have to do a big stand up into the hold that's quite high up above you into a press. And apparently there's a little bit of texture hidden away on that press hold above you. Um, we couldn't see it starting I, I underneath could, it. The setters were like, oh, there's a spot. And I was yeah, looking. They, they, they were telling us and I, I think I nodded. I did I was too. Like, yeah, okay, I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Sure thing. <laughs> Um, but maybe we'll be able to see it when they're on the wall. I'm so glad you said that. I did exactly the same thing. <laughs> All right, Nicolai, let's see what you can do. He needs really to get a top here to stay in touch with the podium. And there we go, sliding around on that press. But a little jib on it, so a screw on hold um, that's going to require some strong tension through the foot. Oh, he's up Great adjustment second there. go, yeah. Hips into the wall. And this is where you have to trust your feet. And it's one of those things you get told when you start climbing, you have to trust your feet. And a boulder like this really shows it. So out towards the zone hold. And we'll wait for confirmation of that. There it is awarded on the bottom left of your screen. And there's the jib you were talking about on yeah, the ball. Yeah, so you can see it just there. But right now, he's, he's on really sloping, terrible footholds. So he's got to keep his weight going through the feet, like you were saying. He's making the most of that hand, but it's all pressing, not pulling. So he wants to work this right foot down onto the little screw on hold here. And then there's some footwork, really patient footwork that is going to be required. Quite fast, so he's going to try and step both feet onto where his right foot is. Step his right foot out to the final ball, reaching round the arete um, onto the screw on that we can see right now. Yeah, there it is. Not a lot on it, and it's a little bit blind. Mm -hmm. And you can see looking around the corner to try to spot it. There's some chalk there. There is, and also, if you look, you should know where it is because there's a line of the wall. Maybe he was hoping to find the hold and for it to feel good and then be able to stop and be in balance. We might see that. Um, I think the vision was for some fast footwork, um, really precise, matching the feet on one, the second to last ball, stepping out to the right as you hit that right hand. So he crosses his legs through, and of course, time when you're on a slab tends to be your enemy because you have to be precise and careful with your movements. And it is ticking down. And look, that's the line Shauna was talking about, the jib right at the top of it. Now he's pushing out with the right foot, with the right hand on the zone hold. Working his foot down onto that tiny screw on hold. Oh, oh he's he loses off, the left off. foot. The left foot slipping there. So the focus just. Well, it looked like he was almost going to call it, decided to have another go. He's got 17 seconds, and I talked about you don't want to be rushing a slab. He's going to have to now, and it doesn't work. Yeah, we very rarely see success when you're rushing a slab. Awful, aren't they? All right, Duncan Lee, let's see what you can do. Second athlete out on boulder two. Really looking focused there. He's got a great picture on um, his profile. Yeah, big smile on his yeah, face. Yeah, really smug. It looks great. Yeah. Hips in, shoulders up, nice and open. 
Right, here he goes again. Will he use the same tactic? No, the press, much, much better. better. You can see his hips are straight into the wall, arching his back and getting all his weight through his feet. Something he's going to need to keep doing along this boulder, keeping that weight through the feet. It's an interesting one because it starts off so quickly with that big, powerful movement, and you have to slow things right down for this Real section. change of pace. And, and then potentially speed up on the way to the Arat too. Yeah, and you could see him taking a breath, just calming himself down here as he starts this foot sequence. So what he's doing here, raising the leg, he's trying to get his weight over. So you can see his, his hips are still above his foot. If he can keep moving his hips and urging them to the right, he'll be able to get his foot down like he just has here. So he was using his leg almost as a counterbalance to move himself rightwards there. Well, he finds the arete and the jib on it. So one move further than Nikolai did. No more points, of course, because the zone hold is back towards the beginning. So he's going to be doing some really tension footwork here, is what I was about to say. Oh. And now he's going to reach around the arete again. And the setter said you want to end up with your right foot there, which is what he's just managed to figure out. So good work, he's got to match this final hold though. Two hands touching it somehow in control and that will be a top for Dohyun Lee. Body to find the right position, exactly what you need to do on a slab. Another great smug, like happy, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Smug's maybe the wrong word, but I think it almost looks like it. I want to look your picture up now and see <laughs> oh what no, that was like. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here goes Majesty. Which method will he use? He had a look over to the right, into the press. Not as focused as he needed to be. I think we'll see that change now. Yeah, much better. And you saw that his hips were in, but his shoulders were also in. So all of his weight was perfectly above his feet there. Oh. Right hand catches the bottom pocket. Makes and the match. He'll know that Do Hyun just did this climb. He'll have felt it in the crowd, he'll have heard it, he'll know from coming out so soon. So it does change how you feel coming out to a climb. I think, you know, sometimes it's great, but it also makes it harder in many ways. Um, definitely going to be something he's aware of before climbing. Yeah, there's so many levels to it, isn't it? Because it's, you know, the physical side of it and the mental side as well comes into play. I'm sorry, puff cheeks there. He knows that he wants to get his foot down, just not... He doesn't, you can see here he doesn't know how exactly he wants to do it. So you, you, you're getting a display of like what's going on in his mind, whereas Dohyun was quite slow and you could see him thinking. We're seeing Majdi moving around, kind of... Ugh, to the right. Yeah, I think that's what... what if you say it again, okay, I'll bring, it up. bring it, was, it up. It was a great word that I hadn't heard before. Udge, maybe. Udge, that's it, that's Udge. It. So it's like kind of a little, like, ah, oh, how do I explain Udge? Like a subtle, like, movement. Okay. Yeah. I'll, if, it, if an Udge comes up, then I'll show you. Please do, because I'm going to steal it. <laughs> All right, now, Mejdi, this is the sequence he couldn't figure out before. He's looking to kind of kick his leg over and drop down onto it, but it's a, it's, he has to be so precise to do that. So it, it's almost luring him in to being higher. He wants to keep his weight through his feet, be really precise. It's something he can do. Um, it's almost he needs to get his mind off the zone hold, off the hand, and start to move around with his feet, getting that weight to the right. Um, whether it's with a leg leaning out or stepping his foot across from wide. Um, but this is all about footwork. Yeah, and still this slight... That hold looks so close there. It does, doesn't it? That's yeah, it's foreshortening of the angle. <laughs> yeah, and you can see there, a couple of meters away, mm. but that's better. Much better, slower. but his arm is still bent, so he's quite high on his hands. He's just but got he's a toe it on it. Okay, well, he'll know now that the time is running out. 25 seconds. This might be his last attempt at this. He wants to hop for it, perhaps. I think he's, he's going to go fast. And I think he wants to go slow. Well, that's what he's aiming for. You can see how small it is by the screws on it. Tiny hold, and he misses oh, it, now gets it. Oh, oh. The line! They didn't hear you, clearly. I hope they watch this. And the pace of things slowing down on this slab now. Kokoro Fuji runs out. You 
can see. 65.72% tops for finals for him and 105 participations. So experienced. Wow. A little short on that. He needed to kind of get a bit higher up. His legs were still bent there, which was a really powerful position to end in. He, if he can stand up tall, get his hips nice and into the wall, legs straight, there we go, much better. Yeah, Great learning from him, a huge adjustment, but only took one attempt to figure it out. Yeah, good work from Kokoro. So he has the right foot on now, but slightly out of balance as he tries to find the right point. Gets the pocket-like feature on that ball, that dish. He's one of only two athletes not to top the first one, so he's going to be looking for a top here to get himself back in the game. Yeah, so he needs this. Adjust the feet once more. Always such great support from the other Japanese athletes and the coaches that you hear Gamba Gamba so loud in the arena every time they're climbing. It's really, really nice to see. It's my favorite type of alley style call is the Gamba. <laughs> I love a Gamba. If Kokoro happens to win this, he will become only the second man to ever defend a Boulder World Champ title. Dimitri did it twice in 2011, 2012, so it hasn't been done for a mm -hmm. while. But he's struggling with that right foot. You can see it shining in the light. I think this is one of my favorite stadiums as well with the natural light. Um, it's something that I've never thought about before, uh, but being in here, it's really, really, really nice to kind of feel like you're outdoors in some ways but yeah be in the arena and it has a different feel i think when you're in a stadium like yeah. it kind of steps it up a level yeah well, it's just the noise it just echoes around the building creating a more intensified atmosphere yeah and it is a pretty big stadium there's ten and a half thousand people can fit in here when it's full so the athletes performing in front of a big crowd Right, so right foot on that slippy surface and he's looking to drop the right foot down to find the jib. Minute buzzer goes. So he's really high on his arms, but he's very close to that foot. He's got the hand swap though, so if he can adjust that right foot. He's, he's not standing on the jib. He's not on the jib. Wants to, ideally wants to adjust that right foot down. There is nothing for his right hand. Well, I'm not sure if he did it deliberately or not, but that's the result, a huge, and he's hurt that leg, grabbed it, I think he's okay. It's often mistaken, I think, um, for them being in pain, but they're just so frustrated at not making it work. He wasn't on the jib because he wasn't able to move. Once he shifted his weight to the right, his feet, it, suddenly his weight was in his right foot as well, so he wouldn't be able to move that unless he moved it really quickly, which is why we saw the slip. Well, that's it for him. I have to have a chat with the athletes after they finish climbing. And, and you're right, you know, the amount of scrapes and, and bruises and bangs, it's a physical sport. I tell you what, you're showering after a finals round, it's painful. You know, you've got all those scrapes all over you. It's something I definitely didn't look forward to. It's something no one ever talks about, you know? No. Exactly. And these athletes have got a lot of climbing ahead of them as well. Those looking to compete in the boulder and lead at the end. I mean, they've got to do the lead competition coming up. Mikhail just kind of losing it there slightly. He knows exactly what he needs to do. Not, he's not even chalking up, getting straight back on. Yeah, and no making issues. That adjustment. Uh, it's interesting. We've seen a lot of athletes have to make that adjustment after their first attempt. Really great setting. Yeah, and it's nice to see it work that second time as well. Must feel like a progression for them. Right, he has his right hand in the dish, makes the match. Great you can see expression. It, it's a good hold if that was the other way up and you were climbing on lots of them. You know, it'd feel great, but it's upside down and you're on terrible feet. So, <laughs> suddenly not a good hold anymore. It's almost like they set a hard boulder or something. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking. Right. They're mean, the root says. <laughs> yeah, they are indeed. It's a cat and mouse game between the athletes and the setters, and we'll see a boulder later on that really plays up to that. But right now, he's creeping that foot down. You can see he was much lower. His hips were so much lower, so he was able to get his weight really far to the left to weight the left foot, and then stretch out to get his foot on the right. And he's having a little peer around. I don't know if you can see where the foothold is. I think we just lost his foot there. With his instructions to the brushes as well. Very much so, yeah. Shout out to the brushes as well. Oh, they do a heck of a job, seriously. Just one arm, one hand palming upwards that time. Stretches out into the dish, thumb in play, better footwork. Let's see if that planning has worked. 
feels like there's a buzz in the arena right now. I think the crowd really want to see another top. You can feel it. He'll feel that too. Well, he's got a... So precise on that foot placement. You can see his heel's quite high, though. He hasn't dropped it yet, so he's not weighting it very well. There we go. We've seen that change. His heel's come up a little bit because it's such a small hold. Oh, gets really the smooth. jib, holds it. But he's wanting to cross that leg through now, which he does. So he's got the left foot over. Right foot around the edge of the arete. It's not over until you have both hands on that top hold. He's not swapping feet. He's going again oh. with the right hand. Mikhail Mauro has magic what hands. A what a match. <laughs> Just he so... No, it's cool to see, and I think the crowd wanted that one. Yeah, we needed to uh, hype things up again, and you could hear their reaction. Most people stand, choosing to stand up down at the front, getting as close to the stage as possible. Uh, myself and Shauna are down at the plastic bit, right in the middle of the arena <laughs> with the audience around us. Great place to be. Right, Serato. Goes for that left hand wrap around the top of the volume. They don't realize how slippery this hold is um, until they slip off it. There you go, changing his mind straight into the thumb press. Yeah, it's interesting. When we were looking at the boulder, I don't think there was many lights on it because now we can see the shine there, but perhaps it's a bit uh, duller on stage because from the camera angle here, you can see the texture, but we couldn't see it when we were underneath. Are you just trying to make us feel better because we couldn't tell where the texture was? I'm old, I'm going <laughs> blind. It's a real problem. <laughs> so, Serato matches. Calm and cool as always. But again, first attempt, a little wobble, straight up on his second attempt. So he looks for the jib now. Spending time taking that foot over really slowly, almost, almost but not quite. How is it? Those thumbs saving him there. And now he's on. Great adjustments from Serato as he, he saves He went with more confidence movement. with the foot that second time. That's all he's holding on no to. No hesitation on the movement across there. He knew what he was doing. But he's now not. having to think. Yeah, and it's not over yet. So he's looking for the left. <sighs> Come on. <laughs> I mean... There's everything there, wow. isn't it? The finger strength to the hold finger that jib. Strength. You could see his forearm. You could see all of the muscles in his forearm working so hard to keep him on the wall right then. And so right now, which is just making it even more exciting. Yeah, usually we talk about you know wanting lots of separation. It's great, but I, I don't care right now. I'm enjoying this fight. It's so, so tight and close. Okay, so next boulder. Now this, this pressing move is between where it says 15 degrees there's one uh, the purple hold on the left and then the zone hold that's where you can face out towards the audience and jump upwards pushing your arms out sideways to make that press move it is for sure but we've also got the running kind of run across start before they even get to that move so there's a lot going on in this border they're going to start on the left and then run to the right hitting the black volume that we can see right here. The zone is just the screw hold that you can see. Um, so they'll press into that and then you, they want to spin 180, pressing up, and then apparently the get into the top hold is also going to be quite tricky. Really awkward to get up into that space, requiring a lot of flexibility again. There's a little tiny jib on there that they can use to help them get up a little bit higher. I believe the zone hold is different to what was just on our screen. The zone hold is actually the little jib, so we'll see that now. Um, they want to edge up a bit higher, 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 and then pressing and eventually reaching around the top hold. Apparently, you can go to it with either hand facing either direction. <laughs> so there are options for our climbers. There are indeed. Yeah, sometimes the 3D render does change because it's done a couple of days before, and of course, the setters tweak the boulders. That's why it was Until different. Until the very last minute to stop the climbers using that volume for either their hands or their feet. So it's stopping a toe hook stop on that first purple hold, and it's stopping them reaching down, really forcing the movement that the setters wanted. Chimney, and then into a difficult top. It's like the Hachiochi boulder on steroids, basically, <laughs> this thing. It's, uh, it's full on. All right, Nikolai. Oh, he's got a giant leap across this boulder, and only two zones. So, and he's sitting in sixth. Needs to get a top here to upgrade his score. The right hold better. Starts this swing again. Time is ticking down, though. Better now. He makes it work. Now, will he turn around? Will he try the press? He does immediately turn around. Yeah. So we need to see a big jump, really strong through the tricep, triceps, and the shoulders. Right, here we go. This is that Hachiochi-style move, the big jump up. 
Hold your breath, everyone, if you're watching at home. This is a big moment. He goes oh, for the jump. Oh, he knew what to do. The root setters will be... Can't stick the slap and frustration starting to kick in for Nikolai. It's Time really, ticking. Really great that he made that move work for him. Not going two hands to the right, but like pushing between the two. I think we'll see most of the climbers trying that actually. You can see how much he wants to try this move again. He's only got eight seconds though. No zone, of course. Sticks it, needs to get to the oh, zone. Flip, flip. Oh, and spins down. It was always gonna be. Apparently it's not over. Nope. So you do that move and then in Hachiochi they, they had a very simple finish here. This is definitely stepped up, it's spicier. They are gonna have to really fight right until the very end on this one. Yeah, as it should be for a world champ. Games, those who are and who are competing combined here, they will have done lead qualification yesterday, which is going to be taking its toll, I imagine, but not for this guy. No, he's in, and now he gets to do the press move. Maybe a bit too slow by pushing up like that. So I could see that beat the work too. Yeah, he's figuring it out. It's a bit at a time. Two and a half minutes on the clock work his own beater out because it did look like he didn't know to go with two hands the black volume like Dohyun did on his first attempt. Um, I hope he manages to figure it out again. I feel like he needs to have a little moment to compose. Yeah, and he has got the time, a minute 45, so maybe this is where he needs to just slow things down. Or speed things Let's up. Let's speed things up, and he rem or remembers or redoes that move. And now his face is into the wall. So first time we get to see someone attempt this way of doing it. I asked the root setter, is it possible to face in? And they think it's impossible. It's incredibly steep in that section of wall. I think facing out, if it, even if it is possible to face in, facing out's gonna be easier, right? So I do hope we see him try that on the next attempt. We can get those legs involved, really push him up. When the setter said that to you, there was a flash in your eyes that mm -hmm. I thought was you going, I reckon I could maybe give it a go. No, I just don't reckon you should ever say anything's impossible <laughs> with these athletes. Well, he's going to try it again here, so obviously he thinks this might be the way. Oh, my shoulders are hurting watching this, so he's watched the drive up with the legs. And not far off, hence. Yeah, he's going to have to be quick. He needs to get this done now. 27 seconds, and he turns almost a little bit. Yeah, so you can see he's really turning his shoulders so he can get the weight into that black volume, two hands over. Faces out towards the audience. Oh, the crowd have told him what he needs to do. He should be hearing that. He needs to bend the legs. Get some weight. And he does drive up much Pushing better. Up. Yes. Oh, slips on the zone hold. He won't be awarded it yet. Should be awarded now. His foot's moved. Um, we'll see whether he will be awarded it. He did move his foot when he was on it, so it'd be interesting to see if he gets that. It'd be an interesting one. I'm sure the coaches will be running around. Yes, there'll be pieces of paper being filled out all over the place, and we're updating the he scores. He has been awarded it. There we go, so zone awarded. Be which could be massive. Zone awarded in 11 attempts. Wow. Perseverance. That is indeed. And it just shows how many times you can go at this thing. So Mejdi, truly new school. Let's see what he thinks of this now. So the, he saw this move in Hachioji. He wasn't able to do it in the competition. Went up on stage afterwards and did it. And I believe has done it since in training. Innovative, they're trying to think of new ideas just as they should be. It's so cool to see and the athletes have to keep up with it. Yeah, they do and he learned from that and now look straight away faces out. And let's go so he can get both hands off here. See, big bend in the legs, super oh. high, straight off the back. This is revenge for Mejdi Schalke. He was gutted not to get that move in Hachiochi. He did it, as you said afterwards, in trainers and now this movement, let's see, he needs to get this zone, or he might ignore it. He's touched the zone, but he didn't make a movement on the zone. But it is not over until he has two hands on that top hold. He's going to get into a really precarious position and have to lean backwards. He wants to make sure his feet are built nice and high. Yeah, and it's the black jib on top. It's not the purple, it's that hold that's the top, and he needs to match that. Adjust the feet, right hand on. He needs to get the left hand on as well. Makes it. Great work from well, Mejdi. Look. He wanted that. Look at it. Look at what it means. That is the definition of learning. I mean, look, he threw Fuji's out. That did jump Mejdi up to the top of the leaderboard. It did, and he'll know that that means a lot. Having not topped all of the boulders so far, he's missing one, so he's going to be trying to catch up and that puts him back in the running all right well this final too close to call at the moment on our third boulder see a lot of tape on Kokoro's leg there 
That, that could that? be a scrape. It could be the... I think about this move now. Be yeah. interesting to see if he continues to attempt the same thing or mixes it up. Yeah, he's got time left to do it. That time it works, though. And now, what will he do? He's facing into the wall at the moment. Doesn't look like he wants to turn around yet. And now he does. So he starts this road. No, no, goes Doesn't back. Doesn't know if he wants to or knows to as well. But there is that. True, yeah, good point. You, you can see it's a, di it's a different set of muscles facing in and facing out. It's you won't get as much from the legs. You won't be able to dip down because you won't be able to let go to kind of go lower into the movement. Yeah, and the issue with this run and jump is it's not one of those sort of coordination moves that seems to be that easy to learn. Even when they get it a few times, it, it's, it, it seems like a low percentage move. Yeah, I, I think you're definitely right. You know, we're seeing athletes do the move and then take a good few attempts to redo it, which is, is quite rare for these athletes, right? Um, again, I think it's all in the hips as we saw Kokoro there. <laughs> His hips are super close into the wall and landed in the perfect... He's still facing into the wall. Yeah, really interesting, because I imagine they'll be spinning around on the mat during observation when they're reading this. Oh, big fall there. <laughs> big fall and a flop. For straight sure. back up, though, straight back on the wall. He's going to go to the bitter end. Well, this is... Oh, he's in now this time. So will he turn around? I don't think he's going to. He's going to try it again. Can he pull off something amazing in this move? He's got one last chance on this. And the clock is ticking down. Yeah, speed, come on, let's go. go it does not have time. Well, he's hesitated for too long. And that's it, can't figure it out. All right, Mikhail Mawam is on. I can't wait to see him on this boulder. Yeah, I'm excited. He's been putting on such a good show. You could hear the crowd get behind him then, you know. He's just fun to watch, you know, it's, it's, he's one of those athletes. Really expressive, really exciting to see. Seen quite a lot of phones out there just capturing the moment of him walking out because it really feels electric in here when, when he enters the stage. He's given the crowd a great show. All right, here we go. Very dynamic into that press. Slightly slower that time. So his foot slipped on the middle volume just then. You can see the rubber mark. Yeah, good point. So let's Which I think actually slowed him down and almost... If you haven't seen it already from the qualifying sessions, there's an amazing foot slip actually there from, I think it was Petra Klingler we caught on film. So it's on the IFSC YouTube channel. And this time he's in. Oh, bumping that palm though hasn't across. Hasn't turned around yet. Not yet. Wait. Yeah, there we go. The crowd giving away so much there, and rightly so, you know, that they're, they're part of this show. It is a show. It is, and he's facing the right way to get this Hand done. Hand off to come a bit lower. Holds Big the move. Big try hard. All right, well, there's the zone, but it's not over yet. He's got to get the black jib on top. Drops the left foot down. I don't believe he made a movement on the zone, so he won't be awarded that just yet, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, true. He hasn't been given it on the scoreboard. He's going to need to be really flexible through here. Take his time. Keep fighting hard. Different method to Mejdi. Mejdi turned before going up. Well, he's got the fingers on it. Creeps the other hand through. Makes the match with just ah. one finger. It's enough to show control. <laughs> Tongue out. And he come out. Um, well, that will help the score. He is going to be so pleased with that. What a climb. It looked like he enjoyed that one. He looks really chuffed with it. Fully in sync with the root setters tonight. You know, perfectly showcasing what's possible on these climbs. I, I think the root setters are going to be really happy. I think they are. They've done a good job here this and evening. so they should be. Yeah, and this morning as well. It was a great semi-final round. I really enjoyed that. I think both of us in the commentary box got sucked into that. And I know from the comments that you guys enjoyed it as well. You can watch that if you haven't seen it yet. One boulder to go after this, and it is a special one. Do not go anywhere, trust me. It's going to be unique. Serato not making it work yet, though. Really important for him. Yeah, this could be where the comp... Oh, and a foot slip immediately holds it. Left on the final volume that he's landing on. He wants it a bit further towards the middle. And again, he missed the... the there's two volumes, you know, there's a small one on the bigger one. He actually hit the higher one there. He's not going to stick it with his foot there. He needs to be more accurate with that foot placement. 
So this is massive here in terms of the competition. Serato not getting close yet. And then as I say, it, he nails the move for the first time. But talking about learning, I mean, he's going to have to pretty much figure this out first go here. I mean, he might have time to go again, but he's going to, oh, wants to rotate. He is one of the shorter climbers in this round as well, which I do think will play a part on this jump. He isn't facing out though, which is the way, which is the method. Um, one of those moves that comes immediately again, it's low percentage and he's running out of time. Things might have just opened up a little bit in the top spot. It has, hasn't it? All to play for suddenly. And he's not going to get this. Serato, no top, no zone, and that is huge. You don't know what's happening during the boulder, but afterwards. So he knows now if he tops the last boulder, he's won. Oh, what a moment. He I knows that. Serato, and they don't top and Serato doesn't. And yeah, there's a lot of different options right now going on. But yeah, it really opens things up for Mejdi and for Mikhail does now let's talk about these clear holes shall we because it's new for me it's new for a lot of athletes and there is zero texture on those things absolutely nothing i actually really like that we got to go up and feel them because i was very curious <laughs> um i think this is going to split the world of climbing not yes. just the athletes whether it's a good idea or not. I think it's really great that we're doing and seeing new interesting ideas um I guess the test will be if it works. Exactly. I, I'm with you on this one. I'm not convinced yet. And the reason I'm not convinced yet is just because it's... It's new. It's new, exactly. And, and I think, But I think what is good is you have to try things. You have to push it. And these athletes are so strong. And one thing the setter said to us is, is look, it makes campus moves differently because the athlete is getting so strong and so good mm -hmm. at them that by adding this no texture element, you change the game up a little bit. Massively, yeah. And that's needed for progression like all of you will they have seen that will they know that will they have talked about it because they didn't know that this boulder was here ahead of time well he's got the sequence down and this time he makes it to the zone so we know it's possible and ups the chalk up ahead of going to the next hold which is actually really really terrible and the last move is spicy it's hard right to the very end well, not that you would know from watching Nikolai no, he's got Unbelievably one. Unbelievably strong. It is feet on no texture, but a match for him. And that signals the end of his comp. So a good way to finish things off for Nikolai Uznik. Well, um, is that why? Because the pour in the water thing, because usually obviously in climbing, we're chalking up, we're avoiding moisture. Mm -hmm. Why does having moisture in your hands help a hold so like that? You want that? them to feel almost like sticky, um, like tacky, which is the opposite of what chalk does. So we've just seen um, Do Hyun Lee spray what I think was rhino skin spit. So um, obviously we can't spit on our hands, um, but we can use a product called like called spit. Um, we spray it on our hands, rub it together, and then it gives that tacky feeling. I absolutely love it. I have really dry skin. Um, I've actually seen Adam Andre using a, a wet towel previously in comps because he also has dry skin. So you'll see him sometimes with a towel where he like dabs his fingers on. Yannick opted for pouring water on his hands. <laughs> I wanted to know, like, do you brush these holes? Do you not brush these holes? Is it good with chalk? Is it bad with chalk? Everyone's figuring it out. It's so to see what works, what feels good. Um, it's strange in climbing, isn't it, that you, you have something completely different. And that is the great thing with using these holds is, you know, that you can have different movements, you can have different stuff, but having a whole different hold type changes everything, changes strange, the whole approach. Strange, exactly, but also rare. You know, we don't see something new very often. Uh, I think the season's been kind of a, a really crucial season and seeing new, new moves, new holds, new ideas. Yeah, let us know at home if you're watching what you think of these holds at the minute so not able in, able to bend those arms and really reach to the zone hold potentially he can stop on the second that black hole the starting hold as well that's also no texture despite not being clear and the finishing foot too yeah every, everything uh, it's Thanks not going to work frustration building so he will stay in third place can't improve his score and again that could be vital Mejdi Shark, well, let's see what he can do here. Has a look at the sequence. It's a very familiar move to the athletes, of course, that used to friction, but this style of coordination, paddle jumps, they'll have done a lot of. Stops on the first one. But almost the first time I've seen someone slip on the hold, actually. 
really, really close to figuring it out. A little bit low when he hit that zone hold. Definitely something he can do. Putting water on his hands here, drying it off, trying to get that tacky feeling. Yeah, it's so different, isn't it? So Mejdi has wet hands, walks the crowd, the crowd behind him. If he does this boulder, he will be in the top two. The only person that can beat him will be Mikhail. Big moments then here in the final closing parts of our competition. And he's in and holds the zone hold. All right, so now he'll make sure of this. Chalks up, ready for a bit of friction at the top. And he does need to keep that tension, stay really strong. Loses it. So when Nikolai hit that, I thought... Could he theoretically take off a left shoe? Because no, they're not allowed. So he has to wear climbing shoes. Wear climbing okay, because yeah. I was just thinking you it's could happened. take it off and then stick on it. Yeah, it's happened before. <laughs> um, no, they're not allowed to take the climbing shoes off. Okay. As far as I'm aware, I'm very, com I'm pretty confident. Good confirmation. Ah, oh, come on, Mejdi, you got this. Like almost comfort in your chalk bag. You chalk up. You see athletes doing it when they're nervous, like on lead routes. You do it subconsciously, um, so it really changes things. Kind of maybe shakes them a little bit. Makes it stick for the second time. 30 he needs seconds. to make sure he spends time chalking up here. Got the chalk back on the hands. Hasn't chalked the left hand, I don't believe, but he's going to go for it anyway. All right, big moment for Mejdi. Heel locked in at the moment. He might be trying to chalk. No, he's just adjusting. Looks like he's setting up to go straight to the top here. Right, so a big potential last move. Ten seconds on the clock. Up with the right. It was a chalk up. Launches, and it's not going to work. So that right hand is so bad. He dropped back down to the zone, was looking up. Four minutes on the clock. The buzzer goes. Great welcome from the crowd there as well. They are absolutely loving this. He is one of my favourites to watch climb. He's just got that style, so powerful and strong. So strong. And these kind of moves are usually his bread and butter, but we can see they're sliding off it. And it's worked, you know? We've seen athletes get through it and not finish the climb. We've seen athletes make it work and athletes not be able to make it work. That Start depends whether you can get that tacky feeling in your hands. Um, if you can, then I think it would feel really good almost, but... I don't think Chalk's the way for this, and that's what he's using. Um. All right, 24 seconds to go. His last couple of attempts here. And he's not getting anywhere, and I think he's going to call it an evening. Down in sixth position. Wow, Man he's peaked at exactly the right moment. Man of the moment. Huge. The Swiss crowd know what's at stake here. They're really getting behind him. He's a popular athlete on the circuit. First goes with a no. And Matt here, whether he's got water, has he got liquid chalk? What is he choosing to use? Oh, close. Falls sideways down. <laughs> Mikel pulls on again. Oh, drops back down. It almost looked like maybe he had too much moisture then. You saw him drop back down, wipe his hand on his arm. Maybe it didn't feel great. Straight back on though, no. Yeah, they're figuring it out, aren't they? I yeah. Mean, he... Minute and a half to guarantee this gold medal. Hyping himself up, what a moment for this man. Sticks it this time. But now, as you said, it's gonna be harder on the top. Spins off and down. But he that knows is it. enough. He knows it, he knows it, so do the crowd. Oh my god, well the lights are already oh, going, we've got a, a minute to go. I don't think I've ever seen that happen actually. I think he might just enjoy it and run that clock down. Why not? Oh. Wow. Yeah, I would if I was him. I would just sit there and soak it in. What a moment for Mikhail Mauer. He's going to get back on, it looks like. Someone tell the DJ quickly, turn those lights off. He's still <laughs> climbing. He deserved that moment. <laughs> and what an athlete. If he's, get, he's getting back on, he's giving the crowd the show uh. that they deserve. They, they, he hyped himself up. They hyped him up. Everyone in here knew what that moment meant. Our eyes are watering. Yeah. I mean, 
Oh, and super close on that attempt too. He's just uh, absolutely pumped. Never. As he should be. I would not. Starting this competition, I would never have put money on him winning this thing. So it's it's the underdog coming through. What a story uh, for our first final. And the oldest athlete in finals. Uh, <laughs> well, Serato still has to climb, of course. And he is, uh, we're just checking the score, fourth. Yeah, so I believe he can bump up to second. And of course, that could be important later on. It's all about the points for the boulder and lead at the end of the week as well. So job not done yet. Serato slips on his first attempt. If he, sorry, yeah, we are right. If he tops, he'll bump into second. A zone will bump him to third. And he has got water down there on the mat, just in case. He's not. Yeah, it was, as you said, dropping that zone, reset things composing himself and kind of take it all in I think it's you know it's it's a big moment he knows what he needs to do if he wants to bump himself back up they compose themselves the way they really push and figure out and be creative with their beta so I have to make him progress there he got higher he needs to get that left hand to the zone I think to be able to hit it 30 seconds left on the clock so it's looking unlikely but we could see something magical. Yeah, you never know, but it is feeling like it's slipping away from Serato. Needs something special in 18 seconds here. He'll go again, of course. And that could be it. I think it is. Well, Serato put through the ringer, and he says goodbye to our crowd here tonight. I will, and yeah, hopefully we've recovered by then because that was that was a lot. That was really intense and such great work from the root setters. I just can't wait to see what they've. Another medal for Dohan Lee. He'll add that to his gold. Previously in the season, of course, the World Champs just hits a little differently from a World Cup. Coming every two years, it's an important moment and an important year as we build up to the Paris 2024 Olympics. <laughs> Leslie Schaub jumps high, silver medal for him. The young man progressing seemingly every competition he takes part in. Finally, Team France make it a 1-2. He hasn't won this before. He's been working for 10 years to build up to this moment. He never gave up. He is the best in the world on the day. Mikael Mawam is your gold medalist for men's boulder. He's still got some climbing ahead of him in the league comp, but right now you can see what it means to him. The audience giving him a standing ovation here in the stadium. Everyone on their feet as the athletes gather at the top of the podium.